Well, it's time to talk entertainment on News 6 at 9, and it's time to mix it up. Look who it is. CJ from Mix 105.1 joins us now. Always so happy to see you. Good morning. Happy almost Thanksgiving. I yes. can't wait. My, my, my suit today is a little tight. Just oh, to remind me tomorrow me to not wear this. <laughs> right. Put on maybe something a little stretchy. And Troy joins Mine's us Mine's tight as every well. day, so I'm used to it. Same, right now. actually. We're, we're all good here. Yes. All right, so we're talking about anxiety. Of course, yeah. so many people dealing with anxiety. It's such an important topic, and it can affect performance. Now, this past Sunday, an NFL player's anxiety got so bad, he had to leave the game. So this is something that I'm happy we talk about now on a daily basis. I and mean, we have these open conversations. So Brandon Brooks, he's an offensive lineman for the Philadelphia Eagles. He had to leave the game on Sunday because he had an anxiety attack. He said it's an everyday occurrence. He wakes up in the morning, he gets sick. He, it's just something he's been battling. Um, but that's why he had to leave the game. And he said his teammates were like, no, it's not a problem. His coach was like, look, that's something he has to deal with. He said his biggest concern was I had to leave the game. Mm. You know, he's like, it's not the fact that he battles anxiety and he has this on a daily occurrence. He's actually said there's a teammate, I can't remember the name, um, but when they have rooms that are next to each other, they both wake up, they both battle anxiety. Mm -hmm. They can hear each other get sick and they know that they're both in this together. They have a lot of pressure. A lot, a lot of pressure. Lot of pressure. There's a lot and of fans pressure. can be mean. They can love you yeah. one minute, and if you mess up, mm. But this Twitter is also, you know, football players are like the peak of like masculinity in yes. America. Right. So the fact that, you know, you have a guy that is playing for, you know, such an amazing football team, talking openly mm -hmm. about battling anxiety on a daily basis, I think that really puts a lot of weight into this and really gives a lot of credit to those people mm -hmm. that are having those conversations daily. Well, and it also shows that anxiety and depression and mental illnesses, they, they don't discriminate. No. So it doesn't matter how much money you make, what you look like, how successful, if you're an NFL player, that this is something that can affect you no matter what. And I think that's such an important so conversation. True. Because so many people can be like, oh, you're an NFL player, you have a great life. What do you have to have anxiety about? And it just shows that everyone's we're all humans. In this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone's Free. humans. Exactly. But people forget, yeah. the people human forget that. They, they think do. Yeah. once you have fame and fortune, that we talked you about don't this with uh, Selena things. Gomez two weeks ago with her mm -hmm. lupus and how yeah. people would say so many mean things to her. And at the end of the day, all these people are human. Yeah. Yes, they have millions of dollars in their bank accounts and they have a huge fan following, but they're human beings who feel right. real things. Yeah, yes. Michael Phelps also talking mm -hmm. a lot about those. I issues think a lot too. of people have, once they have that dream, you know, you have a dream all your life, then you make it to the top. And you realize it's not really what I thought it was going to be. So maybe that's part of it, too. Yeah. Could be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, millennials became the largest U.S. generation this year, despite that high number. Turns out many of them are struggling financially. This is difficult. So millennials are classified those born between 1981 and 1996. And what they found is they compared um, the baby boomers, Gen X, and millennials at this age in the, the millennials' lives. And so um, baby boomers accounted for 21% of the nation's wealth back when they were this age. And then Gen X had 6% of the nation's wealth, whereas millennials are now around 3% of the nation's wealth. And a lot of it is due to rising housing costs. I just mm. bought a house. I yes. know exactly how much that costs. Is it a congratulations? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, so, but rising housing costs, whether you rent or own, you know, the income gap, you know, wages are lower, uh, student debt, that's a huge thing crippling millennials this, yeah. uh, at this day and age. And 73 million millennials in the United States. So that is a lot of people mm -hmm. dealing with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so baby boomers, what they said was at this point in their lives, a lot of them owned homes. And so because millennials are struggling to buy homes, to even buy cars, um, that's part of the reason why it's just delayed a little bit. Mm -hmm. Everything with the millennial generation has been delayed compared to baby boomers and Gen yeah. X. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we talk about the affordable housing crisis yeah. all the time. Oh, I mean, insane. rent in this area costs is costs more than buying a house sometimes. Insane. I was reading somewhere yesterday, Purdue University did a study about how much money you need in each city mm -hmm. to be happy. And in Orlando, it said to be happy in Orlando, you need to make at least one hundred eighteen thousand dollars oh, a year. Oh my goodness! And ah. you know that's. <laughs> That's insane. Probably not what most people are making. That's Causes probably anxiety. not even what couples make. Right. You know, so it's insane. And when you mm -hmm. look at like New York, San Francisco, mm -hmm. LA, it really is a problem that we're facing in this country. And a lot of things that people don't account for too, you're trying to take care of, you know, maybe your immediate family, mm -hmm. the children, mm -hmm. also trying to take care of the aging yep. parents. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of responsibilities revolving around this My coworker person. Susie, she does middays on Mix. I know she, Susie. Yeah, she takes care of her parents. And <laughs> yeah. so, you know, it's, a, it's something that she deals with. So there's a lot of different things mm -hmm. that millennials deal with and any, everyone deals with. It doesn't matter what generation you're from. Right. We all deal with things. It's just for millennials, it appears that every milestone is delayed. So yeah. that might be why that the That student is debt thing growing. is amazing to it's me. Crazy. I didn't have to worry about that, but so many millennials mm -hmm. are still paying for college, yes. which is yeah. crazy mm -hmm. and hard to find a job. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, it is. All right, let's talk about food, guys. Are we yeah, let's ready do that. to That's eat fun. tomorrow? Dressing, mashed potatoes, <laughs> casseroles, of course, pie. According to the Calorie Control Council, which is a thing apparently, the average American will eat between 3,000 oh, and 4,500 calories this. on Thanksgiving Day. Yep. I don't want to know. But a lot of people feel less guilty because they like to run a little bit. Ooh. I know a lot of people that work here at News 6, Eric Sandoval, and I think our social media manager, they're all doing the turkey trot tomorrow. Well, and it's good a for them. great thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my niece has been trying to get me, Mackenzie, right? if you're watching, I know you've been trying to get me to do it. I just don't want to run on Thanksgiving. Right. But a lot, there's a lot of good reasons to, to do the turkey trots. A lot of it is because maybe you're going to a town that you know you just really don't want to be in or you're bored. This is a great way to mix it up. Yeah, there's Eric Planet. Sandoval Look and our that. producer Landon last year. You know, yes. And because we're eating so many calories in one sitting, they say that it's great to get out. You may not, you're not going to burn 4,000 calories running a right. turkey trot, but It'll you'll help. burn three so to So that's first thing in the morning then. Right. Right. And then you're sick, and then you don't feel like eating. So, hey, that may also do they say I, it's If you run, running a 5K is not going to make you I obviously don't. I don't so, either. I mean, so maybe it's a run-walk, Troy. You can walk part you of can, it. You can walk it, trot it, prance it, dance it. If I'm doing it, it, I may yeah. prance it, but I don't know that I'll be running it. That's what I know for sure. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. You know, a lot of people do, you know, boot camps. Yeah. I know my gym, they're having a boot camp tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to go. So are you, I'm assuming you're going? I would like Did to go if I can get somebody to go with me. Who's well, not? I won't be here, so. My gym has a jingle bell run, but I just pay to go there and I don't actually show up, so. Oh, oh yeah, this has been <laughs> a recurring You can tell, that's why my jacket's so full. All right, so, we're, so we, do, we do feature our pinpoint forecast, though, on your radio show. Yes. So how, you know, maybe people are going out for shopping. And, Black Friday, maybe you just yeah. want to know if it's going to rain so you can sleep away those calories yes. this weekend. You know, we'll get you covered with a personalized pinpoint accurate forecast on air. So reach out uh, on all, any of our social medias at Mix1051. Stop me on the street. I won't be at a turkey trot, so you don't stop me there. But <laughs> I can't stop else. you on the street anymore since you moved. Yeah, I moved, so we're not neighbors. So it's going to be so. super weird if I show up <laughs> driving like, down your street. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, CJ. Absolutely.